from the Apple Corporation's recent problems with their supply chain during the production of the iPhone 5. Yeah. It's counting. Right. Good afternoon. We are the consulting team from the University of Florida, and we are so excited that you, the Apple Board of Directors, have invited us back to more thoroughly discuss the ethical framework of the issue. Now my partner Alex is going to review exactly what happened. Thank you. So because of the massive demand for the iPhone 5, Apple had a legitimate need for fast production. This leads us to a story of injustice, the story of the back dog. Vivek is 27 years old, living in Kathmandu, Nepal. He works to support his wife and newborn daughter. He is a dairy farmer, and in 2012, uh, torrential rain struck, uh, killing crops and livestock and destroying Kathmandu's economy. So Vivek had to find a foreign job. In order to do this, he was forced to pay a recruiter, broker, lender, and an agent, and accum uh, accumulated over uh, uh, hundreds of dollars of debt with exorbitant interest rates. So uh, he found a uh, job at Flextronics. Okay, but how did he get there? Well, through these uh, re recruiters is um, the, the general way that he, he, he got there, but at Flextronics, they took his passport, they took his passport and sent him on a bus to the factory. And as you, the board of directors know, Flextronics is a manufacturing firm that works with Apple. Okay, um, so, all right. What happened next was uh, Bebeck, um, was at Flextronics and was paid $178 per month. Unfortunately, after three months, he was laid off and was forced to find a new job. Um, the new job that he found was a shoe rep rep repairman, but as far as this, this case goes, um, uh, be back. Um. It's okay. Take your time. Okay, I completely lost my train of thought. Um. Maybe you can help you out. Production was halted, and Vivek was trapped in his work compound because his employers held his employment or his employment documents as well as his passport. This is where the large ethical problem lies. And now my teammate Connor is going to discuss why this happens frequently in Malaysia. Thank you, Katie and Alex. In Malaysia, 20% of the workforce are migrants, and there is the same number of documented migrant workers as undocumented mig migrant workers. In fact, 50% of the construction workforce are made up of migrants, showing that they do lower income jobs. Now, with the em Malaysian Employment Act of 1955, it stipulates a lot of the things that you would see in any Western country, where there are nine hour work limits, paid leave, and overtime pay. But migrant workers don't see that like Quebec. So now I'm going to discuss to you exactly why these were these actions were clearly unethical. The Apple Corporation at least indirectly contributed to why this happened to Quebec. And since we have seen no meaningful response on behalf of Apple, we are here today to discuss our solution with you. So first of all, let's just look at how Apple treated the humans in this situation, the respect for persons in this situation. We can see that autonomy was taken away at every turn for Rebecca. He had his passport taken away from him, which represents his freedom to move freely in between countries and to have a backing by a sovereign government. He did no longer have this in his possession. Secondly, he did not, he was sent to the foreign country where he is not really as free as he is in his home country because he doesn't know the laws and the regulations and sometimes doesn't even speak the language. So further, production was halted and he did not know why. He was then sent to his work compound where he did not have access to adequate shelter or food. These are his basic physiological needs and by these being stripped away from him, he has no autonomy. He cannot even sustain his own living. Secondly, let's just pause that and look only at the consequences. The consequences of the Apple's indirect effect on Vivek were that he, they separated him and all of his coworkers from their families. They took their life savings, gave them exorbitant interest rates, 
for an opportunity to work in their factory and literally trap them in their work compound. These kind of consequences have real reflections on Apple's corporate character. And let me remind you, the character is your moral actions and your moral decisions. And moreover, character is habitual. Character is not something that you do one time or you would ideally do in the future. Character is something that is repeated. And in this case, we can see that this is not the character that Apple wants to correlate with themselves, the image they want to correlate with themselves. We want a better image for the Apple Corporation. And in so, we are going to propose a three-pronged solution based on Aristotle's virtue theory or working within the golden mean. And the golden mean is really focusing on certain virtues and acting in balance of those. So let's, for example, take a look at courage. An excess of courage is rashness, and this is not what we are proposing. And a deficiency is cowardice. And we can see there was clearly some cowardice going on in this situation with a lack of proper auditing. And so we're going to move on. This is going to be the basis for our solution, that all of our employees in Cupertino, California would know this framework and be able to implement it. And this is going to be the basis for their decision making from now on. It's a very easy and implementable practice for our employees. But now moving on to our concrete solution, what I like to call the golden apple. And so this is going to represent a series of three changes. The first is going to be inward looking at our core. The next part is going to be looking at our relationships with our business partners. And the next layer is going to be looking at our relationships with our valuable employees around the world. So firstly, looking at our core. This really goes with changing our corporate character and our corporate culture. This is that virtue theory that I was speaking of that our employees will know and be able to base their decisions off of. If they care about our empl the employees around the world, these will be at the forefront of our minds and our character will be changed fundamentally and meaningfully. The real core of this is proactive auditing. Auditing comes from Apple and by doing this, we can influence what happens around the world. The next part of our solution is our meaningful relationship with our business partners like the Flextronics of the world where Bebek worked. And by doing this, our code of ethics is going to be communicated seriously. There's no longer going to be just a check in the block that we have a code of ethics. Now there's going to be some teeth to this argument. And there's going to be a set system of consequences if our suppliers violate our ethical norms. We will sever the relationships with them. And lastly, the biggest part of our solution for is to the outer core of this golden apple is Apple's valuable relationship with their employees around the world. And in order to do this, we're going to recommend increasing the price of all new Apple products by $1. And we recognize that this might be an audacious solution on behalf of an ethical consulting group, but let me assure you that this dollar is allocated in a very responsible manner. The dollar is broken up into four different pieces. The first piece, or 10% of the dollar, is going to go to a labor fund. This is going to go to paying the wages of people around the world. We know that Bebek was earning three-tenths of a penny for each iPhone that he inspected. That is a very small amount, but by increasing this 10% part of the dollar going to these labor funds, it's going to make a huge and significant difference for him. The next part of the dollar, or 20%, is going to go to an undesignated labor fund. And what this is going to do is act as sort of a super fund for us, <laughs> so that when ethical dilemmas pop up, we can effectively and efficiently allocate resources and rectify the situation immediately. The next part of the dollar, or 30%, is going to go to a risk management fund. And what this will do is establish relationships with non-governmental organizations to change these types of employment practices that Bebek faced in Malaysia. Apple is a design firm. They are not a government lobbyist group. But we can, we can exert our influence around the world by partnering with these NGOs and create an efficient relationship. We can provide the funds and change these types of practices that we see in the world. The last part of the dollar, the largest percent, is 40%. is going to go to profit, straight to profit, or what I like to call an administrative fund. Because we realize that Apple is a for-profit company, first and foremost, this money is going to come back and make these programs and these changes that I recommended completely self-sustaining. This means that Apple will have no excuse for why this would be too difficult to implement, and it's, it's far more beneficial. And so you can see how our solution rectifies the financial hardships that Vivek faced in Malaysia, how our solution also addresses the legal section, because Malaysia now will have relationships with NGOs who will go work to change these types of employment practices 
and moreover, it's more profit for us in the long run because the public will not only view Apple as a cutting edge design firm, but as the cutting edge design firm who actually cares about humans around the world and that is something we do not see in the marketplace these days. With that, we conclude our presentation. Thank you. Thank you.